Do you like hot, uncut Dutch action from the 70s in all its Technicolor glory? Well, you've come to the right place. I've been shopping in France. Not literally, obviously, figuratively, by using uh, eBay France. And uh, there was a couple of really interesting vacuum cleaners that were listed on there that had the international shipping with them. So I thought, ooh, well, I haven't got anything else to spend my money on currently. And I bought them. So there's two of them. Uh, I've got one for you today. The other one is currently in the workshop. It uh, needed a bit of work doing to it. Unfortunately, it, it sort of survived the trip. I think there may have been a problem with it originally, but uh, traveling all, all those miles hasn't helped it at all. So that will be next week's video. The one I've got to talk to you about now, <laughs> honestly, I don't even know where to start with it. It is one of the strangest vacuum cleaners I think I've ever seen. I kind of know what it is, uh, but I sort of also don't know what it is, if you see what I mean. Now, as we all know, um, back in the day when we had the uh, ele electricity boards, um, the main companies used to make badge engineered versions of their vacuum cleaners to be sold in the, uh, in the board shops. And I think that's kind of what's happened with this vacuum cleaner. So brace yourselves. It's down here. Are you ready? Here we go. Ta-da! <laughs> I don't think it's possible to get a more 70s vacuum cleaner in a more 70s colour. So this is a Moore's Ménagère Automatique. It has this lovely writing here, Moore's Ménagère Automatique. Quite what is automatique about it, I am not entirely sure. There's no electronics in it or anything like that. There's no, actually, there's no power control or anything. When I saw it, I thought, oh, that sounds interesting. It's going to have a computer, it's going to have lights, there's a big all flash stuff going on. Uh, unfortunately not. It's quite a basic machine. Uh, we've basically got here, let me turn it around so you can see it, let's see it better this way. Put it up on its end, like so. Uh, it's just, it's, <laughs> it's so bizarre, right? It's a weird cleaner. Uh, you have your power button here, this little tiny button. Then you have this little sprung loaded flap. Um, so that's where you can uh, insert a power head. I think this is the bag full. It, indicator here is like a piston style one as I say there's no electronics there's no electrics or light bulbs or anything at all inside the cleaner um, so this is probably just a piston style bag full um, and then you have the cord rewind here uh, the most interesting part of the cleaner is actually this bit on the top uh, I'm not sure how to show this to you uh, probably with the machine lying down but yeah it's it's pretty cool so, as I say, well, this is probably a badge engineered cleaner. Um, hopefully somebody in the comments will be able to say, oh yes, that's a blah, 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 from blah, blah, blah. Um, I do know that it was made in 1977 because I found it on the internet using Google, um, but not under this label. And that's the interesting thing, because this symbol here, when I first saw this symbol, I thought, hmm, I recognise that, I recognise that from somewhere. And this cleaner is actually a FAM, F-A-M. FAM is a, is, was, I'm not sure, I don't even know if they're still going, um, a Dutch company. And they have been producing vacuum cleaners since 1945, just after the war. And this style was one that they'd used since the late 60s. And in fact, this actual style of cleaner um, it ran until 1995, which is mind-boggling, really. It's it's so 70s. Obviously, they changed the colour. It wasn't this amazing red-orange. It was uh, much more muted for the 90s version. So on the ratings plate, I'm going to back here. Oh, right. yeah. Let's have a look at the ratings plate. So it's model 850, type MT-1062, 1000 watts made in Holland. I just want to show you here, this is this is quite strange. 
So on the base we have this uh, swivel wheel here, pretty standard stuff. I'm thinking this may be for a wall mount, possibly, you could hang it on the wall, maybe. But there's this screw hole here, which is really odd. So why is that there? It almost makes you think that a different model probably had something else here. This is screwed on, this bit, so the um, front wheel is screwed onto this piece of plastic, and this piece of plastic is screwed onto the body. So I've just got a feeling that maybe there was like a runner here or something for, for the lower models that didn't have this wheel. It was like a just a piece of plastic that sat there. <sighs> Possibly, who knows. The most fascinating part about the cleaner is this front section. Now, obviously, as, as we know, there was um, a keen drive to create vacuum cleaners with built-in tools. It was a, a huge selling point. Certainly cylinder cleaners, it was always nice to have your tools to hand and easy to get to when you were doing your dusting. So Fan must have had this style of cleaner. So imagine this box is not here and it was it was like this. I've seen pictures of them like this kind of style. And they thought, right, well, we need a way to put our tools on these cleaners because we're going to lose market share to the people who have that uh, feature. And what they did was they put this box, <laughs> they put this box on the front of the cleaner and you can open this, it's a bit stiff, you can open this box like so and there's storage here where you can put all the cleaner's tools. It's incredibly simple but also incredibly funny when you look at it and think, my god, what is that sticking out the front? It's, <laughs> it's that crazy Dutch again. The Dutch are mental. I love them. I have uh, fa family and friends over in Holland. Uh, they are wonderful people. And this is just a summary of how crazy they are. And this box is also actually the bag door. There's no other way to get into it. You have to go in this way. And it did kind of confuse me. When I first got the machine, I thought, hang on a minute, how do you, how do you open it? I found the flap. That, oh, you don't go in there. Um, but no, you take this off. Now this, this might be a little bit tricky to, to do on camera. You see here, there's these two red lumps. So these, you push these up and then you take the top off. So I'm gonna try and do it like this, bear with me. This could be interesting. Oh, I did it, look at that. So there we go. So that comes off like so. So that's your toolbox there, that comes off. And then if you look inside the machine, that's where the bag goes. <laughs> now this is a really bad idea for many, many reasons. When I got the cleaner, the original bag that was fitted was packed solid with dirt. It was solid, absolutely solid. And it was so hard to get it out of this chamber. This little black bit on top here is a piece of plastic that runs through onto the inside and the bag actually attaches to it. If I take, I use the Henry bag on this, they are amazingly useful. So there you go, you see that black piece of plastic there, like so, I'm just going to take that out of the way. Now this black piece of plastic has a lip on the back, there's a lip there. So you imagine how hard it was trying to get a solid bag of dirt out of this chamber a without breaking anything and B without getting puffs of dust in my face. It was very hard. The fact that the hose was also stuck in here as well did not help at all. Now this cloth bag, it's kind of like a bag, is actually um, the filter as well. So you have to, it's a really stupid idea, you have to get your hand in like that, then you have to push it off the black bit and then you can pull it out. So that is your main filter, like so. And then if you can see down there, you have um, uh, the bag chamber and just there is the uh, opening for, for the motor. Um, the way the hose releases is, uh, is not great either. In fact, I will talk to you about the hose in a second because it's, it's very odd. Now this little handle here moves back and forth like so. And what that's, that's doing, you may not be able to see it, 
got on the underside of this there's like a, a steel clip that's under pressure and when you rotate it it kind of pushes the clip out of the way and that is meant to release the hose unfortunately the hoses of the, the certainly the machine end of the hose is of such low quality that it just gets stuck in there and it is an enormous pain to get it out so yeah not the best idea I think it's meant to swivel as well it's meant to rotate in the hole but there's no way it, it can do it it's jammed in there so hard there's no way it would turn so it was incredibly difficult to get this thing apart when it first came for the exhaust filter there's this flap here which comes up and off now there should be a filter underneath here uh, like a <clears throat> like a micro filter I can't get that word out but if you look down here under under this grill it's packed with fiberglass <laughs> I think this is done as like a noise cancelling kind of idea it doesn't really work because the motor is here and it basically just blows it back it blows it back uh, and it's like it's not doing anything I'm not entirely sure why they chose to pack that with fiberglass. It seems a very strange idea. Inside, it is incredibly simple, um, but also actually incredibly clever, I will say. Uh, the cord rewind unit sits here, and it's actually a self-contained box. It's in its own box, and you have a little um, rod that comes down. When you push the retract button, it pushes into the box and then that obviously activates the cord reel but you can take out the reel as a whole independent unit that just has a couple of wires on it it's really clever it's a very clever idea if you wanted to change the cable on it maybe then it's not quite so clever because you'd have to take it apart but it's almost like a modular fashion so you have the cord winder here then you have the motor here and there's only six screws to get into this cleaner and when I first started trying to take it apart I thought hang on a minute where are the screws because they are not immediately obvious if I turn it around look there's nothing here there's no hidden screw holes by the wheels um, there's nothing on the back there's nothing on the sides and actually the screws are hidden under these uh, black trim pieces so if I can Maybe I'll take it off. Oh yeah, there we go. So you take off the trim, like so. You have one screw here, which is facing that way. And then you have two screws here and here. So it's mirrored on this side, so you can take this off as well. So when you undo three screws each side, you lay the machine on its top and then take the bottom off. So in many ways it's similar to the Hoover Freedom, that is how you take the uh, Freedom apart. It's If you take the top off of Freedom, <clears throat> excuse me, it's very difficult to get it back together and to work on it because you've got all the wires from the switches, you can't easily take the top off. Same with the fan, um, everything is here, the motor just lies there, um, and also very similar to the Freedom as well, the um, motor is stuck between two frames. So you can see one frame there, that's one frame, uh, and the other frame is on the back. And those frames hold the motor and the flex winder unit in place. So like Freedom, it's quite tricky to get the bottom back on when you're reassembling the cleaner, because uh, you've got to get everything lined up just perfectly. Unfortunately, I didn't do it quite right in this. You may be able to see there that, uh, and that's that's kind of like a paper seal. You can just see the grey on the brown. Um, yeah, it's a paper seal, which is very strange, but it's thin, so you can get it in easily. It's not ideal using paper in a vacuum cleaner. It's not brilliant, but uh, there we go. It does kind of work. And that is really an overview of this very, very strange vacuum cleaner. I really hope that uh, someone in the comments can say, oh yeah, that's, uh, yeah, Moore's was made for, oh, I don't know, a department store maybe, or s something like that. Uh, maybe what the same kind of thing with our um, e e electricity boards. But yeah, it's a fascinating cleaner. 
Now I need to try and get this bag back in. So again, see, so it's not, it's not brilliant because you've got to get this. There's a plastic cuff. Look, there's a plastic cuff there on the bag. So you have to push this in like so. Then you have to push it down. You have to hook it over the back, and then you've got to get it in like so. There we go. I did it. <laughs> I'm so clever. And then you can take your Henry bag. Feed that in like so, and then again, find the back hook, and then pull it up and over, and that should be it. Yeah, there we go, that's locked in place. Um, and now we put the comedy tool storage unit back on, and that just slides up like so, and you have to put it up, so do it. and push these knobs in, then it locks in place, and there we go. So there we are. Our Moore's Ménagère is back together. I am really curious as to what the automatique means. I can't really work it out. I don't know what they meant by automatique. Automatic flex rewind? That is really the only thing I can think of. And in all honesty, maybe that was it. But who knows. Now I just want to show you the... Um, tools a second let's put, the, let's put the fan like so now i only got the hose with it when i bought it sadly um but it's lucky that i do have the hose to be honest with you that bent end it would be interesting to know if that is the original bent end if anyone knows this seems a bit later to me i remember this style of being fitted to a few machines back in the 90s it, and also it was a pattern it was a pattern spare so yeah if if you know tell us and the other end of the hose where it fits in with the machine this is really odd i've rarely seen a cheaper method of attaching the machine end um, cuff to the hose that is literally just glued in there. It's just glued. There's, I don't think there's even a, a thread. Well, actually, there might be a thread, but it's definitely glued because I can I can see the glue, and it's so cheap. It is such a cheap look. look I hold it up. I hold it up to the camera so you can see it. It's just really cheap and nasty plastic, and this is meant to rotate in here. If I show you, if I push this in, it gets to there and then it gets tight. So there's no way absolutely no way that this will rotate in that hole um, and actually you can see where someone has tried to gouge it out of the cleaner they obviously thought it was stuck in there well it was stuck in there really badly and they've tried to put a screwdriver um, around the side and trying to lever this thing out um, didn't work it took a it took an almighty effort to get this damn thing out of there and i'm going to put it back in now so hopefully i can uh, retrieve it afterwards so because I didn't get all of the um, tools with it, we are going to be using um, an original uh, pneumatic Henry head and rods uh, because it's, uh, well, it's probably about as close as we can get to the colour. So yeah, I think that should work quite well with it. So with that being said, let's get the fan slash moors into the lounge and give it a run.
Well, it may only be a thousand watts, uh, but by God, hey, it's quite a quite a powerful vacuum cleaner. Um, I worked up a sweat doing that. It's quite warm here today, anyway. But uh, yeah, what a great little cleaner. It's a thousand watt twin fan motor. Very very efficient it would seem and also using that uh, Henry bag helps massively so yeah I hope you enjoyed the video um, next weekend uh, we should have something quite interesting from France as well hopefully I can get it ready but as always thank you very much for watching hope to see you in the next video take care bye